Hey guys, it's Brian and Max, and today we've got Seb from Snake Pass, Hello. which is a, oh, just a wonderful sentence to say. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. Thanks Very for coming nice through. Uh, so tell me about Snake Pass. We're actually going to jump in and play some levels today. This is a brand new game you guys are working on, right? Yeah, it's uh, coming out next week now. So uh, yeah. it's been in development for a year. I'm very proud to show it to everyone here. All right. So let's jump in and see how uh, that snake moves around. All right. <laughs> We're making a lot of snake jokes today. Snake is probably, or the snake is probably a, a top five animal, I'd say. You even though, so? Even though it doesn't have legs or arms. I think he's uh, a great, that's a great beast. a very special purpose animal. <laughs> like a specific purpose animal? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't no, it's a kind of a novelty animal. It doesn't have legs. So now, art-wise, this game um, feels very evocative of kind of the, the retro N64 platformers that I think many of us uh, grew up with. Those of us who grew up playing good games grew up with. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Visually, it's very much inspired by that game and, and the feeling of that those type of games. Um, so did was he sleeping there, or did, you, did we wake him up? Yeah, if you idle for a while, he'll he will take a nap. Oh, that's adorable. It's a very chill, relaxed game, and yeah. we expect players uh, occasionally to just have a little nap. So, Does the snake have a name? The snake is named Noodle. Noodle? Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. awesome. And his little hummingbird friend is called Doodle. Oh, Noodle. So Noodle and Doodle are sort of like a sidekick duo here. Does Noodle ever eat Doodle? It seems like canonically that would happen in... in Real nature. No, our noodle is a vegetarian, and Aww. they're best buddies, so no, he would never eat him. So this is actually, like, I think at a glance it looks very kind of cartoony and old school, like, 3D platformy, but then I'm looking at how the snake moves, and this looks incredibly complex to, to design. Yeah. Like, that's a funky rope. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, and it, visually it does immediately bring back memories of old school platforming games, but the mechanic that we use in, uh, to control the character is completely new, completely sure. different. So now... This is not a platforming game per se, because I haven't seen you jump yet, but you are traversing interesting cartoony environments for collectibles. So I, how did you guys decide on making a kind of platforming game where you don't jump? Well, the whole process of uh, the, the early beginnings of this game come from a game jam that we did in October 2015. And uh, at the time, I was just between projects trying to make a rope, like you just said. <laughs> Uh, a rope that would move when the player touches it, and uh, as I was creating the rope, it at some point fell on the floor in this really nice, smooth, physical way, and I thought, wow, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see if I can make this rope controllable. So, are you getting longer? Uh, no, that was initially also the plan to make you longer, but as we started exploring the gameplay that we could do with this character, we, we realized that he kind of needs to be this length to okay. be able to do the things that we want you yeah, to do. I just, I, I just see myself getting tied in knots if we start playing by, like, cell phone snake. Oh, yeah, like if the, his tail's yeah. at the beginning of the level and your head's you at the You can end. actually tie yourself in a knot as well if, if you really try. Whoa. So how many... Did you guys get to handle or or interact with or study real snakes? Well, um, I'm, I've got a biology master and during university I had two pet snakes, so I spent many hours <laughs> watching television with the two snakes crawling through my hands, so I, I knew a lot about when and how they use their muscles. You realize we ask incredibly stupid questions on a regular basis and we very rarely get serious answers. Yeah, that was really that's good. <laughs> yeah. I've been a teacher for five years, so I, that's kind of what I do. I transfer a stupid question to... <laughs> A so, good answer. <laughs> so I do have some issues with the snake so far because, uh, wow, that looked dangerous. Um, I, I've seen him eat a lot of things, but I haven't seen them take the shape of the the object inside his body, like when a snake eats a pig or like a, another animal. He's more absorbing them than actually <laughs> eating them. <laughs> so this is obviously a very kind of laid back, relaxing uh, game about collecting. Yeah, yeah, um, it's very much a puzzle game. Like it's all about the controls, because. Mm -hmm. uh, what you don't see is like you guys should probably try it in a bit so you can feel what it feels like because it, it really mimics the way a snake body works in the sense that his whole body is a giant muscle and you can't just navigate the level only considering your head you constantly have to think about the weight of your body and using the muscles in your body to wow. navigate the environment this is great because like I've, i mean we play so many video games as like humanoid characters and that's obviously kind of more intuitive because we're used to being human shaped mostly but a snake is like it's a it, like i said it's a funky rope it's like a weird there's there's a logic here that is it's a, there's a learning procedure yeah absolutely you really love just coiling around that old bamboo up there yeah <laughs> but that's the thing once yeah. you get a hang of the controls it becomes extremely satisfying to wrap around things and and really mass yeah ex execute the moves yeah as perfectly as you can and a lot of the time you'll see me do extra things just to challenge myself and 
to keep it more interesting. Can you, can you coil up in a spring and hop around like the snakes in Cubert? <laughs> no, unfortunately not, no. Yeah, that could, because that's actually very bad for the snake's vertebrae. It's all, a whole documentary on that. It's also incredibly disturbing to look at, yeah. so I'm glad you didn't do that. That would probably make us throw up. So, so are there boss fights in this game or anything like that? No, is, it, is there, there's no, there are no enemies at all. It's oh, all wow. about you know why? collecting oh, the collectibles. Yeah, that's what they called snakes, kings of the animal kingdom, except for lions. That's true. So they're known as. one of the core mechanics of what I'm trying to demonstrate here is if you try to move in a straight line, uh -huh. you'll go extremely slow. You really need to use all the curves uh, in your you body. Wiggle. Because snakes actually have millions of tiny little hands and feet not on their true. bellies. <laughs> yeah, true. very true. I you re you're not reading the zoo books I got you signed up for. I also studied snakes in college. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid, the twin snakes. <laughs> Tell me about this hummingbird. How did he come around? Uh, the hummingbird is primarily, uh, initially, it has a tutorial function, kind of like Navi. He explains you how to play the game, and he also tells the story because the snake itself can't speak. Uh, but he also has a practical application, which is actually the reason he exists at all, and which I'll show here. Because it's a physics-based game, the, real, the body of the snake has real weight to it, so occasionally you'll get in a situation like this, where your tail is sort of dragging you down and you're struggling to get up oh, a ledge. Right. In that case, you can tap the Y button, and then the hummingbird will give you a little hand and help you out with your tail. Oh, that's like when a Disney princess gets dressed using the help of thousands of birds. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I, I like that you've made this sort of like non-conflict-enabled universe starring what many of us perceive to be an incredibly deadly poisonous animal. <laughs> yeah. He's a happy little snake. What are you talking about? So it's, yeah, it's I know this about one is. finding a vantage point, planning your next path. Look, because the main objective of each level is to collect the three gems. So uh -huh. You see the red one in the distance there. Is that a twisty slide need. back there? Yeah, it is. Can we put can we put Absolutely. this weird snake through that? Because I think that would be some high art we could show our audience. Oh man, was he okay there? Can he get hurt? No. Well, you can what? fall off the level, obviously, and, okay. and but this is one of the early tutorial levels, so most of the time you'll just land on the floor here. Mm -hmm. But on the later levels, uh, when you fall, you will often fall to your death. This is, very, this is very relaxing. I like it. Yeah. So did you guys grow up playing, uh, or I mean, not grow up, I mean, have you played, did you, do you have a rich history in playing sort of like the kind of rare inspired like 3D platforming, that, that era? Do you have a deep connection to that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bungie Kazooie, especially Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 for me, I like some of the best games ever made. Yeah, totally. Not just because of the gameplay, but the whole package, like the visual mm -hmm. style, the music. I just have such fond memories of that as a kid. And you know, whenever I buy games for myself nowadays, I still look for that type of game, but it, it's just not there anymore. It, and I think in recent years, um, Ori and the Blind Forest came out, yep. which was like for me kind of, uh, yeah, re reawakened that urge to play that type of game, like the colorful, happy platforming games that are all about there, mastering the character. There's what? something immensely satisfying about this snake animation, like yeah. just watching it coil around things. And I'm looking at this level like Mario would get up there in a half a second, but the snake's like, nah, dude, chill. Yeah, Come so on. every collectible becomes a little puzzle in yep. itself. How do I get, how do I manipulate this weird character to get to that spot? I love it. Oh, here right. we go. Right. Whoa. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Well, I love that you like you're like there aren't enough games like this. So you made one. Yeah. You, know? you didn't just like complain about it on the forum. You like, <laughs> like I gotta fix that. Yeah. And you took you took it in your own hands. You grabbed that problem by the snake. <laughs> Grab what? Does he eat? Uh, no. At the moment, he doesn't eat. No. Once, once every like two <laughs> at, weeks. At the moment, he, he eats fruit. <laughs> Yeah, once every two weeks he eats a, a wild boar. Man, this is like just so. I'm yeah, just so and relaxed. I'm in full control of this. Like, there's nothing pre-programmed. It's it's not suggesting any moves for me when I touch something. It's all about with pressing the right buttons at the right time. Can you just like kind of dangle your head off the side thing and just like let it chill? Yes. Sweet. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> just like that. And if you now wait, he will also take a nap. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. This is kind of like having a pet snake in your house because you can just leave this here and then just like let it go idle and yeah. be like, ah, oh, my, my pet snake noodle is sleeping again. I love this. I love it because it's, it's totally like, it does feel like kind of like <laughs> a place. Oh, that doesn't feel healthy. That's weird. Is he okay? That is a weird, what is, what's going on with yeah, his so mouth there? Yeah, whenever he's, he's worried about the position that he's in, he will try <laughs> he to make... Like, ah. The idea is it mimics the face of the player. Like, I, I'm calm now. I knew I was fine. Yep. But if you, if you were playing, you would probably feel the way he was looking. <laughs> so now, what platforms is 
Snake Pass coming to It's going to be on all the platforms. So PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. And Switch! So you can bring your snake everywhere. Yeah, and I think, like you said, you can just leave him hanging for a while, which is very suited for Switch play, yeah. where you can just put it in a sleep mode, right. get a few collectibles, put it back in sleep mode. Yeah, that's awesome. There's no time pressure, there's no, no chance that you'll get killed while you're AFK. Thank you, it's thank you for doing that, by the way, because like, there's a lot of games that are just incredibly stressful. Like, I just want to have like a nice time with some animals. And they're, you know, they're, they're instead, there's Whoa. All these animals trying to kill me. No good. Where did he go? So the main objective of each level is to restore the gate, which you do by collecting the three gems. So this is what I did. And, and now all of these secondary things that you collect. Yeah, they're just to, to entice you to try new moves and to really master the controls. Like uh, you can main path the game pretty much, pretty simple by just getting the three gems. But if you really w want to show off your snake skills, you can go for the other collectibles. Now, are as there well. unlockables or anything like that? Uh, you do get a secret surprise for collecting all of them. A secret yeah. surprise. A secret surprise with five S's. Um, does the snake ever molt? Uh, no. Definitely, the, a lot of the things you suggest <laughs> are actually things we did consider. Uh, really? And yeah. Absolutely. You thought of because I mean that's like one of the things that people know snakes do is they leave their gross skin behind. So we're looking now at a level that's um, somewhere halfway the game, and uh, you see there's a lot less floor, there's moving stuff, and the size of the level is yeah. also quite that's a lot bigger. Yeah. thing to put up if you're trying to keep snakes off your property is just rotating squares because they hate them. <laughs> you can't stand them. Now, uh, how many how many people worked on this game? What's what size team did you work with? Uh, initially, we started off with. Uh, the three people. What? Yeah, because uh, like I said, it comes from the game jam. So initially it was just me. <laughs> and after winning the game jam, uh, they gave me a team of three guys and uh, a couple of months to try to quickly knock something out. We could make us like a promotional thing. Uh, but after three months, we presented to the bosses what we'd done, and they were just blown away by the potential of the idea and yeah. just the amount of work we managed to do in three months. That rules. So yeah, they really doubled cool. the team. Yeah. Here it is. Here's your game. That's yeah. a, like tremendously inspiring for anybody who wants to make a game that you can just start with three people and then and bring it on the road from there. This is really interesting to watch. I'm terrified he's going to get his like tail stuck in something, by the way. Well, if that's the case, then we can always ask the hummingbird for a little assist there. That's a very helpful hummingbird. He doesn't really seem to have a lot of things invested in, the, in what the snake's trying to get accomplished with his day-to-day -day here. But he's still really hustling, man. He's really putting in that work. Yeah, and if you really try to play as efficiently and as quickly as possible or, or try to find shortcuts, then it will come in very handy. Because he, he, he changes the point of the center of gravity of the body, so you'll be able to take some more risks, or get quicker up ledges, like here. You now don't have to use it, but if you do use it, you are up a little bit quicker. Now, the music is like really calming and funky and cool. It really reminds me of, uh, that again, that N64 era that just brings me back to my childhood. Um, how did you guys come? How did the music come together for this game? Well, the music is uh, by done by David Weiss. Oh, awesome! Yeah, which is uh, the same composer that did all those amazing Donkey Kong oh, games. Yeah. And um, yeah, for those that don't know, David Wise is the sort of legendary rare composer that worked on pretty much every 3D platforming collectathon that you played back in the day. Yeah. Um, so how was it working with him? Did you guys just call him up and be like? Got this snake. We want you to make some music for it. Uh, I've lit literally been a fan of him for as long as I can remember. I used to go into a Donkey Kong level, not even play the level, and just listen to the song, and yeah, then go to another level and listen to that was song. Was it the underwater one? That was one of the best. It yeah, was for me. It was Sticker Brush uh, yeah. Symphony. And, uh, that was by far my favorite one, and I used to listen to that all the time. And even while working in the last couple of years, when the Do Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze came out, yep. I would listen to that soundtrack while working. So I'm just a massive David Wise fan. So did you send him footage of this game? Like, how does how does it work to sort of like how do you work with a composer like that on a game like this without having him sort of directly in house with you guys all the time? Uh, so when I um, got the chance to work on this game, I sort of jokingly said like it would be a dream come true if you can get David Weiss to do the music for this. Yeah. And I never expected to anything to really come out of that. But a couple of weeks later, the audio producer tapped me on the shoulder and he said got a surprise for you. Uh, we contacted cool. David Wise, we showed him some footage of the game and he loved it and he would love to work on it. That's incredible. So yeah, that's how it started uh, and we had him over in the studio and uh, the way he works is uh, he really makes the, the music specific to the gameplay and the level so he, he wanted to play the game, look at the game without any audio so he could get a clear picture in his head of what he wanted for the, for the music. And then he just goes off into his studio for a couple of months 
uh, every now, now and then sending glorious snippets, <laughs> even giving us the chance to, to give feedback on something that often already sounded perfect to me. Was but, it yeah. was it like completely surreal to work with a composer who you grew up being a fan of? Yeah, That's yeah. So well, cool the whole th the whole process of making my own game is like surreal to yeah. me. Yeah, and now like now, said, it's, uh, now it's here. People will be able to play it very shortly. Yeah, are you excited for the reception for this game? Oh, incredible! I can't wait for people to get their hands on it and and really experience because it is a game you that you can't properly judge just by looking at it. Like yeah. you have to play it. You have to feel. How the snake reacts to your input, and and then then you really get it. And yeah, I can't wait for people's reaction to that. Like, oh, you can go underwater? Hell yeah! Yeah, so in the, okay, this is one of the water levels. This is so cool. Uh, underwater snakes really frightening. I'm okay with snakes, but eels are no good. And so here, even we don't even see like the snake doesn't drown. He doesn't have a life meter. He doesn't have to do that thing. That no. Yeah, it's, it's no, really you relaxed. You mentioned like Ori the Blind Forest, which is a beautiful game, but it also is also just like prohibitively difficult at yeah. times. Uh, so to have a game that you can just kind of play to unwind, or I guess wind up, sort of, depending <laughs> on how you're yeah. it, it's... Uh, That's good, Max. Sounds nice, thanks. So but don't, don't misjudge it, though. It does get hard. Like, the control scheme is very easy to pick up. It has a lot of depth and a lot of little tricks that you, you'll learn along the way, and so the later levels will be really difficult, especially for new players. Now, uh, that's the guts of good mechanics, though, yeah. you know, easy to, easy to learn. Were there versions of this game in early planning where the snake was uh, meaner or angrier or more combative? Like, was was he eating a part of it? Like, it seems like he's very like, like, you know, calm, he's very calm and very cool. But was it he was a very good question. Yeah, because my biology background, when I had the original prototype, I I was sort of leaning towards a very the prototype was even named Snake Simulator. Right. So I was leaning towards a very realistic approach. And yeah. The snake looked very realistic. Was based on one of my pet snakes, Aww. and uh, one of the uh, the the end goal of each level was to find the hamster and hug it, <laughs> and it would explode. Okay. In a so we ended up with a much nicer, much much calmer thing. Yeah, because we got a lot of feedback early on from people who thought the idea was interested, but interesting, but were kind of yeah. creeped out by the movement and yep. the realistic elements of it. So. And when we realized that was a real thing that was stopping people from actually playing the game, we decided to really go for this extremely happy, upbeat vibe. Right, right, instead of disturbing children of all ages. Yeah. Good call. It's also, it's uh, probably kind of slow once you get the hamster. just takes a while to get it in there. Just, you know. Yeah, well, it would explode in a yeah. cloud of hearts. Uh, oh, so, that's, yeah. that's cute, but still upsetting. Yes. Now, Seb, have you ever been attacked or bitten by a real life snake? Well, my, one of my pet snakes was ex extremely aggressive, yeah. That's it it would attack me all the that? time. <laughs> well, I, the, the, his mouth was so small that I couldn't actually do any serious harm, but, but he was thinking about after it. a year or two, when you take care of this animal with so much love and he still bites you every day, it did become a little bit frustrating. That sounds like a thing a snake would do specifically. That was probably the, the liquid snake. That pair of <laughs> Funny enough, he, he was called Solid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had two nice. snakes. One was called Solid, and the other was called Liquid. That's awesome. So here you just bo you bounced off one of those jet streams to get over here. Yeah. So, so this is uh, one of the wind levels, and one of the mechanics that we introduce here is wherever you see these leaves blowing right. up, is an updraft, and you can see the hummingbird uh, will signal that he's ready by the, and when you press the Y button, he will carry you across. So cool. So it don't, like this is like you are getting sort of mild platforming elements through stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's so it keeps fascinating. The, it keeps the physics though. Mm -hmm. A hummingbird carrying a large snake is like one of those photos you'd see from Australia. Yeah, you, that would be <laughs> on the. That's not right. It's like be, it would be on the front page of Reddit. Yeah. So this is one of the later levels, and here you really need to use the full abilities of the snake. Like this wrapping around that I'm doing now yep. it looks very simple, but it will ta take new players quite a while before you get that. So now, um, as you can see here, like Seb said before, there's oh wow, that was a good move. There's very little floor here, so you're basically you're basically just traversing from from very tight precarious scenario to scenario here. Yeah. And then you've got spikes on the ground, which is just pure evil. We don't see the snake get punctured or anything, right? I don't think I can handle that. I'm well, if I fall, he will definitely die. But That's if terrible. I do Why it right, do I shouldn't be falling. <laughs> and then you get killed with spikes? It's very upsetting. Is he talking? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Ah. 
I love that he's like kind of nervous about everything that's going down. He's like, I don't want to go get that block over there. Yeah. yeah, very much so. It puts a smile on your face, and that's yeah. what we keep seeing as well when we bring it to uh, to packs, for example. It's just a, a, a crowd of people standing around it, all with a giant smile on their face, just from watching alone. Uh, now, wha what would have happened if you got his little snake tail stuck in that horrible rock vice back there? Would that, would that have been <laughs> bad? Does he get hurt there? No, there's a little gap that will allow you to oh, thank God. get through that. Side. I don't think I could watch that. I think that would really mess me up right now. Like I said, I'm, I'm really connected to this snake. <laughs> Good. That, that means we did our job. <laughs> this is a major problem a lot of farmers face in some countries is snakes going up in the windmills <laughs> and hanging yep. out there, absorbing warps. Yeah, this is, friends. this is actually a huge issue in the Netherlands is that their their windmills get covered in snakes yeah. constantly. Yeah, they got to put like pieces of tinfoil up there to scare the snakes away. Yep. That's why we, we use a coal-based system here in America. Because <laughs> of the snakes. The snakes are terrified of coal. Mm -hmm. Another mechanic in the wind levels is while you're trying to climb, uh, the wind will try to blow you off. So uh, a lot of the puzzles and interaction and progression in the gameplay is based on th on the physics again. The whole game is about physics. It looks like a, a traditional platformer, but right. it is very much a physics-based game. All about managing the body. And th th the movement is, someone summarized it as methodical and satisfying. And I yeah. think that, that that perfectly sums it up. Yeah, it a little bit more coherent world that you're in. It's not just like a weird sky snake going around. It's also a very bright and colorful and beautiful game, which I really yeah. appreciate. I think that, like, obviously we need more of that in the universe now. But it's was was there like what what did it like sort of how did you land on the art direction for this game? Did you always want something that was this vibrant? Yes. Good. Well, yeah. Like I said, initially we went for this. I I thought. The, the the way to go was this really realistic uh, approach, but when we decided we need the snake to be cute, it was like let's go full out with the cute. Let's let's make it look like one of the classic 90 platforming games. Now, does his mouth have to touch the power up or the, the collectible for it to count? No, you can collect it with any part of your body, which That's is great. in later diff more difficult collectibles. Definitely, you want to be collecting them with your tail. That's oh, the nice. only way to get to them. Now, how many levels are in this game? There's going to be 15 levels. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And each of them has the, the, the three main objectives, and then 20 optional collectibles, and five also op optional, but even harder collectibles. And if, you, if you beat them all, the perfect score, you unlock the secret power up, which is legs. <laughs> well, I, I wish that was true. That's <laughs> not true. That's Just one huge leg. That's not a snake anymore, it's a salamander. If you do complete all the levels, you will get uh, an ability called snake vision which will allow him to go in sort of a meditative state and use his sense of smell to point out where the collectibles are that you still need to find. Wow. It's kind of like predator vision. Nice. See, I knew he was a predator. He's trying to pretend he's not. I can tell. He's a, he's a trained killer. I saw the way he ate that thing. He's a very cutie pie. And he's got kind of a duck mouth, which I find very cute. God, he's so damn adorable. Seb, you're yeah. killing me here. <laughs> So one of the Look at those eyes! I just want to hold this snake! One of the other things we added is um, because a lot of the team has a background from coming from Little Big Planet, and we all love Little Big Planet and right. Snack Boy, so when we decided to have that <laughs> expressive face, we added this ability oh, with nice. the directional buttons to also change the expression. Oh my god, look face. at that! So you can sort of role play as you go and oh, that's great. cheer when you've done something or prepare for something. So Snake Pass is out next week. It's on uh, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Yeah, that's right. All of them. Everything. Man, that's awesome. Uh, and how much is it? Only $19.99. That is fantastic. Uh, 15 levels, $19.99. Uh, that's Snake Pass. You should get it immediately and relax. You're probably having a stressful year or maybe bad things are going on in your life. Maybe you're afraid of snakes and you need some good old-fashioned exposure therapy. But snakes are where it's at. This is the year of the snake, right, Max? No, it's not. Really? No. What is it? Okay, well, a snake can eat both those animals, so I don't care. Yeah. Snake pass. 